Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> Happy Thursday. How you guys doing? I am um, trying to get comfortable. You know, it's really cold in Las Vegas. Um, wow. We I feel like we went from like uh, shorts and t-shirts to like sweatshirts. <laughs> like in a day, like it just completely uh, switched. So I'm kind of adjusting. I've never been in the house here uh, in the fall or winter, so it's it's chilly. So I'm um, cold today. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How's it going? So we're only on Facebook today, so I'm not tuning in to um, uh, Instagram. And because um, I want to test something on my phone and I need my phone to do it, I usually use it for Instagram. So. I am uh, just, I got to load up here. Hang on. Um, so I want to test something. Hope you guys had a good day. We got a message from the guides today. So I'm going to share that. It's been a while, right? It's been a while since we've uh, shared messages from the guides. So, um, okay, perfect. So I just want to kind of see how this is going. Okay, perfect. So, um, all right, I gotta put my little glasses on. So how are you guys? So let me just see uh, who's chiming in. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Lori. How are you? Uh, hi, Bonnie. I'm cutting in and out, Leslie says. Okay, let me know. Hang on a second. Uh, you know, sometimes it, 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 it may not be my internet, it might be yours. I'm kind of hot, I'm kind of, I got really strong internet in this office. I went through a lot of effort to do that. So I'd be surprised if it was my internet, but it still could be because it is windy out. So it's possible. So let me know if you guys are having any trouble hearing me or if I'm cutting out or anything. Hi, Rainy. Hi, Chris. How are you guys doing? So uh, we have, uh, so let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Make sure it's, um, it's not um, going in and out or anything. I need to know that. Pay attention to that. So we have um, a letter from the guides and uh, it's been a little while since I've actually uh, sat with them, you know, in the channeling way. So um, I used to do it every day and then, you know, with the move and, you know, being really busy with work and clients and stuff, I just kind of slowly walked away from that just a little bit. And I just sort of felt an urge to kind of go back and that's what they do, they give me urges. And so I think maybe um, they they want me to kind of move back <laughs> towards the, um, the, the channeling again. And so I actually did a channeling session for myself uh, two days ago. And then yesterday I uh, did a channeling session for everybody. And that's what I'm gonna share tonight. So I just wanna see if all you guys are on. Hi Lynn, hi Angie, hi Ann, how you guys doing? Hi Sarah. So, hello, Bonnie. All's good, she says. Okay, and Lori can hear fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Um, all right, good. So, uh, all right, so we're just going to wait for a couple more people to get on, and then I'm going to get going. We're going to kind of get right in it. Uh, and um, I love being able to come forward and just kind of share the messages, you know. And again, um, you know me, I'm, I'm a big sharer. Uh, and obviously, tonight, uh, take what works for you and leave what doesn't. Obviously, uh, I'm just here to share and the guides are just wanting to share as well. And so that's um, how it is. So first and foremost, we have Halloween in a couple of weeks. And, you know, I always buy like really big candy bars for the kids. And this is um, our first Halloween here in this house. So obviously, I want to make sure I'm here and everything. And so we, um, I always buy these big candy bars, king size bars for all the kids. Um, but I said, you know, I don't know how many kids are going to be here. So I don't know how many kids per household. And so I need to be prepared. And so I also bought this bag of candy that has like 170 pieces of little, like almost bite size, you know, they're like these little sizes, like teeny, like, like an inch big. And um, can I just tell you, there's like maybe 12 pieces left. <laughs> they're so cute I've been eating them for two weeks and I'm not saying I'm the only one that ate them all I'm saying is the only one in this house is my husband and I <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna say that's all I'm gonna admit to <laughs> so uh all right anyway I just um I really should know better and buy candy that I don't like but I don't because I only want to buy what I know I like that I know is good that kids would like so and I like what kids like <laughs> so Hi, Sherry. How are you? How you doing? Hi, Sandy. How are you? Can't wait to hear the message. Good, honey. I know you are coming on my um, my small group event too next week, right? I think it's next week, isn't it? It's next Friday. So I think you're on next Friday, right? Hi, Athena. How are you? Hi, Julie. Hi, Diane. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Darla. 
<laughs> Lori's laughing at me. <laughs> um, the danger of Halloween candy, like no joke, right? Like I'm telling you, I mean, and I knew, let's be honest, we know, we know when we're buying that early, we know we're going to get ourselves in trouble, right? I mean, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't think I'd eat like all, almost all 170 pieces, but I did. And it was like Reese's Pieces and Milk Duds, which are my absolute favorite. That was my surviving guide of COVID was Milk Duds. I don't know how many I ate, but way too many to admit. Anyway, um, all right, so perfect. So also just really fun, you know, I'm going to go see my mom this weekend. And so I called her up and I said, I'm going to drive down to California. And she goes, why are you coming down? I said, I want to be with you. I'm going to hang out. I want to do your laundry. I want to clean your house. I want to change the sheets on your bed, do groceries. Um, see if you need your medications filled. You know, take care of you. She goes, well, that's wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So she calls me back an hour later and she says, are you moving me out? <laughs> What? She goes, are you moving me out? Is that why you're coming? Are you coming to move me out? I said, no, I'm not coming to move you out. I'm just coming to clean your house and just do your laundry. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so suspicious. <laughs> I'm just coming to help you. <laughs> I'm not getting, a, you're not getting a moving truck? I'm like, no, you're sure? And I'm like, I'm positive. I'm not getting a moving truck, mom, okay? You just want to clean your house and vacuum. <laughs> and uh, that's what I want to do. She goes, okay. Oh my gosh. You guys ever have moms like that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Leslie says, I bought what Monica did. <laughs> did you do the same thing? Did you eat up all the candy? Hi, Patricia. How are you? Um, hi, Lucy. Uh, okay. So anyway, so that was a little kind of fun find. Also a little quick thing. Let me see if we're all in. Okay. So I think we're getting good here. So we're going to uh, get going. Uh, so first and foremost, I just want to kind of tell you for any of you who are new, um, have any of you that are joining me not heard um, a letters from spirit or a message from spirit um, from the guides? Are all of you familiar with my guides, Edgar? Um, is there anybody here that's new uh, that does not know Edgar or does not know um, this process? I just want to make sure we know that first before I get going. Um, uh, Anita says, Monica, you look fabulous as usual. God bless you all. Oh, thank you, Anita. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay. So it kind of feels good to put fall clothes on a little bit, you know, like it just feels good. You know, I'm not really a summer girl dresser. I like turtlenecks and sweaters and blazers and boots. And that's the kind of girl I am. I can wear jeans every day of my life. Uh, anyway, so, um, so for any of you guys uh, that are new, you know, Edgar is uh, a collective group. There's many of them. Uh, I have many uh, guides and they all kind of come in and work in different ways and they work with me in different areas of my life. Some work more in the heart focused area, some um, uh, are more you know, career focused, some of them are. So they kind of come in and, and help me uh, in certain areas in my life. And you all have guides too, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you've connected with them or not, you do too. Every one of us have a support system that um, works with us, that helps us along in life. All of us have that support system, all of us, uh, and no different. Um, the only thing is that my guides are a little more vocal, and uh, it's a little bit because of the work I do, but it's also because of the work my guides like to do. My guides are teachers. They love to be able to share. They love to be able to work with me in my mediumship because guides do that. Um, the guides are helping me in my mediumship. They're allowing your loved ones to, um, they're, they're helping your loved ones be able to communicate with me, um, letting them know ways in which I can receive what it is they want to express for you. So the guides will work with your loved ones and then the loved ones will come in and work with me. Um, and so you know, my guides are always playing a role in my mediumship and also in my, um, my, my psychic work and all of my work that I do with you guys, with you in your life. When I work in, in readings where I'm actually working with you and I'm working about your life and kind of helping you in areas that you're stuck, I'm actually working with your guides. I'm working with you. I'm working in your energy and your guides work alongside me. So you all have them, I promise you, because I'm working with them. <laughs> so you have guides also. And um, for some of you guys, you might want to kind of say like, who am I trying to spam on? Um, you guys, some of you might want to say like, I don't know, like, how do we know we have guides and how does that process work? And it's obviously going to be a little bit different for everybody. But, you know, for me personally, you know, when the guides started working, oops, something's burning in my eye. Um, when uh, guides started working with me, it was a long kind of journey with that. My whole life, I just always felt somebody with me. And it really was just that for many years. I want to say probably 
30 years where I just always knew somebody was with me and I never questioned who it was. I just always knew there was somebody there. I was always um, kind of able to sense that. So um, hence mediumship, right? But anyway, so it kind of like started like that. And then it just sort of moved when I began to go into meditations. Um, my guide started appearing in meditations. And then I had this um, thought to a uh, video and record myself meditating. And I had incredible footage of what transpired during my meditations with all of that energy coming in uh, to the room and uh, working with me. Uh, it was really amazing and it was it was wonderful for me to see that because it really gave a lot of clarity and knowing for me that something was happening and going on and I'm kind of that person I need to kind of know it I need to see it to believe it. Um, and so I have tremendous video footage of uh, meditating and um, that energy kind of coming in and then working with me. So and then it kind of started with meditating and then I would, you know, get ready to go to sleep. And then right before I would fall asleep, that kind of in between space, the guides would step in and actually speak. Um, and the guides speak complete sentences as in mediumship. You know, I'm getting a little Pictionary. It's a little bit, they, they give me a, a picture, an image, um, um, a word, um, uh, something, and then they attach it with the feeling. And so there's all this other stuff that happens in mediumship reading. So the way my guides communicate with, with, with me is different than how loved ones in the spirit world, when I'm fostering reconnections, communicate with me. It's a very different um, way of communication. But... So when the guides would come in, they would um, come in between my state. So I would I'd be really relaxed and I'm almost asleep, but not quite. And then they would move in and then they would give me communication. Um, and sometimes right before I would go to sleep, I would just sense a lot of energy around me. Um, and then it started to be where I would wake up uh, um, in the morning and then I would see um, um, a guide um, at the foot of my bed or in other situations. Um, and then through time, I started seeing more. So I would see one guide and then I would see another guide. And it always seemed to happen right in the early morning, like right when I was just waking up. Um, I just would kind of get up or they would wake me up. Actually, they do that often. They actually wake me up uh, or they'll wake me up or, but it's always in the early morning, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. or 3 a.m. It's usually those hours. It's not like midnight or 1 or 2. It's always like 3.30, 4, 4.35 um, when they tend to come to me. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, I've noticed through the last year or two, even since I've moved here, there has been so much activity in um, guides connecting with me. And, you know, I'm working from the home now, so that might be a little bit of why also. But, you know, again, they come in the morning. So, and the reason why guides do that is because you're really at ease, right? You're rested, you're fresh, you don't have your mind filled with anything from the day. You haven't had any emails or phone calls or any disturbances or any things you've had to think about or do where it's kind of filled up your brain. Your brain is empty and it's a wonderful way and a wonderful time for them to come and um, impress upon you communication. And sometimes communication is simply just by vision. So sometimes I tell you when um, when the guides communicate, like I told you guys, I don't know if you were on before when I mentioned how a new guide came to me and he woke me up by tickling my foot with a feather. And then as I got awoken, I, I realized it was this feather. And then in my clairvoyance came this enormous Native American with this enormous um, headdress on. And, uh, and so, and there's always information in the picture. So pictures are communication. Right. So there's always very practical information that the guides or even your loved ones in uh, readings will give me through clairvoyance that really unfold a story for you guys in your readings. And also for me, when the guides are communicating. So when I'm doing my channeling sessions, which is what we're doing today, it's another way in which they work. So they're not impressing images on me. They are. Um, impressing thoughts through me. So they're pushing thoughts into my mind. And instead of speaking it out of my mouth, because this time I wrote it, they're pushing it in my mind, right? And so that's something that also happened with the guides. When they started showing up with me, they would show up in the morning. And then I would feel them sometimes right before they, I went to bed at night. And then we started writing and they sent me an urge to want to start writing. And 
that is when our journey began with our writing. And I, they call it automatic writing, um, inspirational writing, where you just kind of let go and you kind of move your awareness away and you kind of empty yourself a little bit. And then you allow yourself to be flooded with dialogue. And then you just write with no stopping whatsoever. And then before you know it, you have this whole communication that's poured out of you that you can tell by the personality and by the information, it's clearly not you. It's definitely someone else working alongside and working with you. And that's how it was with me. And that's how it started. So we started this journey of writing for nine, 10 months, and then we wrote a book and then uh, we did another book and we've just kind of been on this journey. So we, I speak with them and they write through me and, um, and they come visit me a lot at night. <laughs> so anyway, so, and I love it, you know, and, um, uh, actually the other night I had another one that came to me at nighttime and it was like, I don't know, about three 30 in the morning or something. And I'm just laying in bed and, um, and all of a sudden somebody came to my ear and they blew in my ear and they spoke a couple of words to me uh, in my ear. So they blew in my ear to wake me and then I was awoken and then in my ear, they spoke to me and it was a, it was a male and, um, and I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly what they said, but it sounded <laughs> like they gave me a name of a hotel. So they were giving me an actual um, hotel name that is here in Las Vegas. So I don't know exactly what that means or what that's going to mean. Um, you guys got any thoughts on, on that? Because that's all I got. And I was like half asleep. So, you know, it took me a minute because the air that they blew in my ear woke me. And then the words came. It came so quick, you know. Um, but I'm pretty confident what they said. But I'm not 100% sure. So I can't really uh, do anything with it. Um, hi, Pat. How are you, honey? Nice to see you here. Um, hi, Kim. How are you? Excited to hear a new letter. Good. Um, I am excited, too. It felt good to get back with them. Um, Rainy says, I blame waking up at 3 a.m. on menopause. <laughs> Maybe I should start listening instead of being annoyed. Yeah. You know, listen, I mean, absolutely. Listen, there's a lot that can happen for you in those hours because you're quiet, the house is quiet, your brain is a little bit, usually a little bit more empty because you've been resting. And it's a beautiful time for the spirit world to work with you. It's a wonderful time for the spirit world to work with you. And I have found in my experience that that's what they do. So that has been for me. And so this has been kind of my journey with my guides. It's been going on for um, a long time now and I love it and, um, and uh, sometimes I need a break and they allow that. And then when I feel it's been a little too long or they feel it's been a little bit too long, they start pushing me to get back um, into the communication again. And that's kind of what happened um, this last week. Um, hi, Michelle, how are you? Um, nice for you joining me, hi. Um, okay, uh, let's see, anything else? Okay, so I'm gonna get going. Um, Let's see. Leslie says, keep saying live video interrupted. Is anybody else having any problem before I get going on my video? I mean, with my right, with my reading. Um, anybody else having a problem? Uh, Sherry, say a prayer for longtime listener Diane Warren. She passed last week. I know Diane Warren. I almost think I did a reading for her as well. Sherry, did I do a reading for Diane Warren? I think I did. Yes, right? I think I did. Um, let me write her name down. I'm going to sit with her um, once I finish here. Diane Warren. Thank you for letting me know that, darling. Um, um, I, I'm going to uh, sit with her. I'm going to sit a little bit with her when I'm done with my live. So I made a note. So thank you for that. Uh, okay, so I just want to make sure everyone can hear me clearly. All right, so... Uh, so just want to kind of give you guys a little feedback, a little, I mean, a little bit of um, inside scoop, a little bit of the guides and how they kind of work. Um, they also work with me when I walk. Um, again, my head is kind of cleared. And again, I don't know if you're on one of my lives, but like a week or two ago, I spoke about how I um, was walking and I was listening in my headphones and I was listening to Taylor Swift and the Taylor Swift kind of went away and over Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift kind of went in the background and over Taylor Swift, a female um, guide came in and said, your life is your journey. I'm here to help you on it. Call upon me. Again, another guide. So, but understand that a lot of people who are wanting to connect with their guides or wanting to have more communication with their guides, um, really it just takes practice and it just takes discipline and, um, and uh, you just need to kind of show up and be consistent. 
uh, they, they respect and show up when you show up. So if you make appointments, they'll show up with those appointments. And, and with my meditation, I did that all the time. I always showed up at the same hour every day. So they showed up every hour of that day. And so, you know, that's kind of how it went. And so when they had tr trust and faith that I was serious about the, about the connection and wanting to build our relationship, um, you know, they grew stronger and it's been this way ever since. And it's possible for you as well. And even though maybe you won't do it exactly how I do it, you'll have your own special way that the guides will work with you, your guides. So just know that that support is always there with you. And my guides like to also be supportive to you guys. So they're my guides, but I really do believe that they're here to be shared also. So they're for me, but they're also for you. And that's why I have my moments where I channel with them for me and my growth and my development. And then I also I like to do something for you guys. Um, and they love that. So, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, in my session. I hope you guys are ready uh, for it. Um, Everyone looks like they're sending prayers here. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Gosh, so sorry, Sherry. I am definitely going to sit with her. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So here is my little letter. So what I did is I felt inspired to want to sit with the guides. And as I did, uh, I always, when I write with my guides, I always sit first and I um, ask them what I'm asking for, right? So that's what I do. My camera is funky. Okay. So here we go. Hello, Edgar. I thought today would be nice to offer a message or some inspiration for all of us. I'm asking for communication with you. Please speak with, please speak whatever you would like to say to uh, everyone who listens. And they began. Today is indeed a very fine day to be together in this most wonderful way, bringing forward our way of teaching to help you each forward a bit is of our wanting. And we thank you for the opportunity to be here in this way. We say a topic that light can be shined on would be in the area of how one spends traveling in any given day. We say life is a beautiful journey of discovery with so much that can and does come into your experience. We see many traveling through the day in great speed and others who feel down when there is no speed coming from them at all. What we mean here is that each of you are traveling in your life in and out of each day and we watch and we observe the different degrees in which you each travel. We want to express what we mean here by using an example of a traffic light, a traffic signal. A traffic light has three different color lights that show up directing you to drive and also not to drive. Green is you moving forward, yellow is slowing your pace and red is where you stop completely. In your day, you have life working very much for you just as a traffic light with these colors. Some of you are quite fine with the green light, but feel not so good when you are placed at a junction in your life with a red light that appears. We watch and see how many of you travel through your day only with your foot on your acceleration. Full speed forward with no stopping very much like traveling on the Autobahn. When traveling in your life this way, you are very unaware of all that passes you and what you pass as well. So much is there for your experience that when you travel too quickly, you are unable to see all that was trying to show up for you. Things that were there to get your attention, to inspire you, to excite you more, to get you feeling. When you are the vehicle in your life that is always wanting to travel quickly, you miss so much that is showing up for you. The red light is there in the signal for a purpose. When you stop at your red light, it allows you to refocus. At the light, you can become aware, you see, of the car next to you, also stopped as well. 
as well as the car in front of you, behind you, and perhaps even the vehicles that are coming in the opposite direction. You are able to see this. This red light allows you a moment to see, watch, focus, and there is great value for you in doing this. So many of you feel when you are stopped, when life has slowed you down, that you are gonna be late, late for something, miss something, perhaps an opportunity. Can you understand that the red light does eventually turn green once again? And you always will arrive where you need to be, when you need to be there. You must trust the signals given to you in your life. It is something we wish to bring focus here as we wish not any of you to feel that if life has stopped or halted your plans or slowed down your movement of where you are trying to go, that it, it, that it is a bad thing or something has gone wrong. It has not. It is in fact a necessary thing. A red traffic light has you sitting idle. This red light in life gives you an opportunity to be more in your moment. If you are heading forward at fast speeds each time you go with no place of focus to be given, you will eventually end up in a different spot from where you intended and with a different mindset as well. Speed never gets you where you are meant to be. Rather, it is traveling down the correct road that gets you where one is meant to go. If no attention is placed on your location, direction, and what moves you in that direction, it can be very easy to get lost. Many of you feel lost at times, wanting to travel down the road of purpose, but not knowing where the road marked purpose is. Wanting to show up at your destination, a destination you have planned for yourself in your life, but not sure if you are really heading there at all. You see, your road in life is landscaped with beautiful experiences and two, some challenging ones. It is actually the landscape that helps you discover what feels right for you. But if you continue to travel on the Autobahn at such fast speeds in your life, you are not able to see the landscape on the journey you're on. You miss everything that is showing up for you. So we rather you be a bit more like the yellow signal light where you move, you go, but you move and you go with awareness. Just as you travel through an intersection with a signal during a yellow light. You move and go with attention to your surroundings that are around you. This allows you to travel with movement, but you are watching the landscape that is there for you to be seen. How many times have you done a road trip and you looked out the car window with awe, with amazement, with seeing something that touched you in some way? Can you think of a time that those scenes you saw out your window gave you a lasting impression or a memory or a feeling you still get when you remember that vision. Think a moment of one, please. We assure you, you were not traveling with great speed at that time. We assure you too, that you were happy for the moment life gave you. Life is showing up for you to get you always to ask yourself what you wish more of or less of. Life is always creating a unique roadmap to bring you more of exactly what you wish to experience. If you are not stopping from time to time to see what has shown up for you, how? How may you know what you like or what you want or what you wish to have more of? There is, we say, great power in pausing there is great value in slowing it down. 
and there is great purpose found on your road in your life. Are you looking out the window? Ask yourself. We wish always your journey to be full of life and life feeding you experiences that give you expression, excitement, and with the wanting of you to always wish to ask more, more questions and find your answers on your journey. This is a magnificent way to travel through your life, to expect scenery along the way that gets you feeling, moving, exploring more of who you are and what it is you enjoy. It cannot be easily achieved, we say, when the foot never leaves the accelerator. So we say, be willing to ease off the gas a bit more and coast through some of your roads you take in your life and pay attention to what shows up for you because you are requesting it and it is arriving for you specifically. In your world, you have a saying of life is a journey and it is in fact so. Do you show up for your journey? Are you showing up with excitement to what is waiting out the window to be caught by your own eyes? Are you present or are you driving straight, fast, and with no stops along the way? If you say yes to the latter, then you are one who is more interested in what is at the finish line and not what is along the way. And we say here now, there is never a finish line only more journeys with scenery along the way. And it is for you to be the best traveler you can be to provide yourself with the best experiences to be had for you. To do this, one must be willing to slow down and look out the window. It is through the window that purpose that is so wanted is to be found. It is so. And until next time we say, there is as always great love for you here. It is so. Edgar. So that is the letter from the guides. So um, let me just see what you guys think about that. Uh, let me just see. So I thought that was kind of lovely. Um, So what I wanted to kind of just share with you a little bit here is, you know, when they're speaking about that, when they're talking about looking out the window, you know, they're using the car and they're using, you know, going through life and being able to pay attention to what our surroundings are because the surroundings around us is communication for us. Remember how I said earlier how the guides or your loved ones in a mediumship reading give me clairvoyant images. The clairvoyant images is communication. It tells a story. It is information. And when the guides give me something for me personally, I pay attention because there's information in that. When your loved ones do it in a mediumship reading, there's information in that. And when the guides are saying, when you're going through life too quickly, not taking a breath, not breathing, not slowing it down, not enjoying what's around you, you're missing communication. And so many of us ask, what is my purpose? And they said, your purpose is found in the scenery. It's found on your journey. It's found by looking out the window. So we must pay attention to what is showing up for us because they're saying what is showing up for you is specific for you. So there's information in everything that we see. And if they're saying, if we can treat ourselves in our life 
to be to go through our life more through the yellow opposed to the green they say sometimes we just go so fast we're just trying to get the outcome we're just trying to get things done we're just trying to get through the day we're just trying to check off our list we're just trying to go 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 we got all this we got to accomplish we go with such speed our foot as they say on the accelerator that we're not willing that, that we, we miss everything that's showing up for us, which is information for us, which is communication for us. And so many of us are asking for guidance, but we go through life so quickly that we're passing it by. And they said, you know, that you don't get to see what's showing up for you and you're passing, you're passing things by and you're not able to see what's around for you. And if we would slow it down, like they said, the yellow traffic light, if you ever go through an intersection in a yellow traffic light, we've all done it, we tend to go through that intersection cautiously. We're aware of what's coming at us, right? Because we want to make sure we get through the other side before it hits red. We need to make sure there isn't anything else coming at, at us, that there's not a problem or an accident, right? You understand what I'm saying? And they're saying it's like that, that if we would move through life a little bit more like the yellow light, we move because if we don't take action, we can't get anywhere, so we need to move. So we can't always be, we can't be a red light all the time, but they say there's value in the red light that life gives us these um, traffic signals. And trust, if life pauses you and you feel stopped and stagnant at the moment, understand that there's a purpose for that. Life is feeding you the red light for a reason. And when we are going too quickly, they want you to know that we're missing things that we need to slow it down. So they say in the yellow light, when we go through the traffic light, we are cautiously driving through the light, dr dr driving through the intersection, and we're aware of what's coming around us because we don't want to have an issue, right? And they say, if we can slow it down so we have movement, but we're still aware of what's going on, we're going to find a lot more for us on our journey. So that's kind of what they're talking about, you know, and I liked how they use the traffic light as a way to explain that. So what do you guys think about that? Let me just see here. I don't always get all of my, um, I'm just going to kind of show here. Hang on a minute. Let me just see if there's any other comments kind of coming in here for you that I just wanted to sh see if there's anything I can answer for you. But does that make sense for you? Hmm? Uh, let me just kind of see here. Um, okay, let me just see here. So let me just see if there's any of this kind of coming in here. Oh, I can't do that because it's doubling up. Okay, anyway, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I do that sometimes. All right, anyway, so that is kind of uh, what was happening. So, you know, sometimes I'd like to, you know, create some dialogue with the guides that can maybe help us forward. And you know what? You know, the guides are... You know, who are guides? Guides are spiritual beings, which we are as well, who at one time lived on earth. Guides are someone who have had a human experience and they have had experiences in this life. And through the elevation um, and through the process being in the spirit world, they have elevated to, you know, higher levels or their purpose being to be more teachers. Um, and so, but they've actually been here in life. They've, they've shared, I don't know, you know, doesn't, doesn't have to say it was 30 years ago, 50 years could have been 300 years ago. But I'm just saying is that, you know, guides have been as their spiritual beings who have had human experiences, right? And um, so mostly spirit guides are that. And so there is a, a wanting and an understanding and a joy in wanting to help us in this experience because they have stepped here before. And so, and so I love how the guides just want to always give us very practical ways of being able to see things and being able to, you know, just give us something to think about, something to chew on, right? So maybe... Yeah, we are maybe going through life a little bit too fast, some of us. And maybe this traffic light, this green, yellow, red, understanding that there's reasons why life will actually slow us down or even halt us a little bit. Maybe something that we want isn't ready for us yet, so it has to slow us down, you see. Is that a bad thing? They say never think that if life is slowing you down a little bit or pausing you or putting things on 
on hold for you, things that you want, that doesn't mean it's not for you. Maybe we haven't just met up with that timeline yet or you know maybe something else needs to kind of occur first or maybe they need you to be more aware of things so they need you to slow down a little bit first so to trust they said the traffic signals that life is giving you that there's purpose for all of it so that's what i want to say hi julie it's kind of like what COVID has forced some of us to do forced us to slow down Exactly. And, and there was great purpose in that. So for as hard as COVID has been for all of us, it really did put us at a red light. It really did give all of us, all of us a red light. And through that red light, we were able to refocus a lot in our life, how life has changed us at, at that time, how we have changed from that experience, how it's now re-geared us on another road. Perhaps it's redirected us a little bit. There is more focus put on maybe more important things in our life, made us look at things in our life that we've been overlooking, that now we need to put more focus on. We're appreciating things differently that maybe we didn't before. And so the red light is purpose, as they said right? That it don't, doesn't always have to be green. And they said, sometimes when you're going all the time, you're going to end up on the wrong road. And it's important that we have these lights, that we take our time to go. We have our pause where we're stopped. And then we kind of move more cautiously, more slowly with the yellow, that they all play important roles for us. And I think that if we could kind of see that in our life and not to get down on ourselves, if things aren't moving quick for us to understand that life is slowing us down for a reason. Let's focus on what that is. Let's pay attention to the scenery. What is life showing us? What is the universe bringing us? What is communication around us? What are we seeing? What are we being made aware of? And are we taking the time to look out the window to be aware of it? Right? Sarah says the slowdown was the best thing for me in many ways. Right? And I think that we can all say that. And none of us expected it. And all of us were very upset about it. Right? It's like, here's that red light. Right? We're upset. We were going. You know, it happened to me as well. You know, I was on a roll. I was doing all of my my kisses from heaven, all, all these auditions. I had 15 or 20 events scheduled in 2020 when everything uh, stopped. And I only got to do four of them. And then the rest I had to, I had to cancel all of them. And, you know, in that moment, I wasn't so happy about that. But I'll tell you, that red light allowed me to get off the highway a little bit. Literally. And it allowed me to kind of say, hey, do I need all these offices? Do I like this commuting hours um, at a time? Do I like living in hotels three and four days a week? You know, am, am I wanting that? So it made me reassess things. But I would not have done that had I not been given the red light. If things didn't pause for me completely, it wouldn't let me look at life differently and find new ways of working. So it was a gift. But in the moment, I was upset about it too, you know? So, but there's always reason for the lights that life is giving us. And we need to be okay with the green, the yellow, and the red and know it's purpose for us. It's, it's showing up for a reason for us at this particular time in our life. And um, there is great value in it. And I think we need to not be hard on ourselves. Uh, Joanne, yes, I can relate to this, especially this week with all going on in my life right now, being more aware of what is coming to us each day, right? Um, there is constant communication being given to you. And whether that's through your guides, whether it's through life giving you experiences or the guides showing up, giving life experiences for you so you can ask the questions. Like for me, being shut down, like being with the red light, I had to ask myself the question. How am I feeling working from Zoom? How am I feeling not having all my offices? How do I feel not being in five hours of traffic to come home on a Friday night? How do I feel about that? Well, I kind of like that. I kind of like not being on the 405 freeway bumper to bumper traffic five, six, seven hours to get home on a Friday night. That's how sometimes how long it took me to get from one office to the other. So, you know, so maybe it was time for me to reassess how I worked. So that red light was great value for me. Even in the moment, I was upset that I had to cancel all of my events. So what is it for you? So can you understand that the red lights that have been given to you, that there's some purpose in that for you, right? And, and there is, you know, they're saying great value in the 
moving, but moving slower, right? Where you could move, but be aware. Kim says she loves this message. I've struggled with life situation slowing me down, but in doing so, I have been able to concentrate on myself and become healthier. I feel the best I have. I feel the best I have in decades. I am now thankful for my slowdown, right? So if we can understand, if we can say, hey, life gave you a red light, but in that time, it allowed you to reassess. It allowed you to pay attention to your landscape of what was showing you. Hey, Maybe things were showing up in your experience about, hey, maybe this is a time to get healthier. Maybe this is time to make it about me. Maybe things started showing up in your experience, your landscape. You know, they used to look out the window at your landscape, but what is life showing you? You were probably getting communication, Kim, that made you think about this area of your life and you moving with it is a beautiful thing. So bravo to you. So I think that that's um, great. Julie says it's kind of, oh no, I already read that, sorry. Um, uh, Michelle says, how do they communicate with us? So are you speaking about guides or your loved ones? What are you speaking about? Because as I mentioned in this uh, live, that loved ones communicate with me very differently in a mediumship reading than my personal guides do with me. Um, they have, as you can understand, they have full dialogue. They they write books with me and chapters and, and dialogue. So it's very different. Loved ones um, work differently. Um, there's a, a different uh, connection. Uh, so are you speaking about your guides? Uh, so if you're speaking about your guides, Michelle, they communicate with you through imagery. Guides will give you um, images. They will impress things upon you. They will, you'll all of a sudden just feel like doing something or you'll just feel like going somewhere or you'll just feel like not going somewhere <laughs> you know you'll just get an impression something that kind of gets impressed on you to act in a certain way or um, in a certain direction when i was ready to open up my first office i woke up and i felt impressed to find an office i just woke up saying i think today i need to find an office this is you know years back by 11 a.m i had an office it was time. The guides were letting me know. They were pressing upon me. Hey, today, let's put focus on finding an office. It's time to get you moving. And I then felt to call a girlfriend. And I called that girlfriend and I told her what I wanted to do, find an office. She had the building right for me. She gave me the communication. I called that building. They had a spot open. I was able to sign a contract. And by 11 o'clock, I had an office. It was literally like that. It was literally that fast. So, you know, so when it's time to move, guides will let you know and they'll move you in that direction, but they'll do it by kind of, you have an urge. You know, when I wanted to write, I had an urge. I think I want to write. I don't know why. I just know I do. And then I kind of feel like I want to take a break and that's okay. But then when it came time to start writing again, they gave me the urge. It's time to write again. And so um, urges is a way that the guides often will communicate with you. Um, just through, you'll just get an impression, you'll just get a feeling to want to do something or to move in a direction um, or to move away from a direction. That's guides communicating with you. Does that make sense? Any other questions like that? Um, are you enjoying this? Let's see. So did you guys like the letter? Um, so that's what I kind of wanted to, oh, what is that? Hang on, hold on. Um, okay, perfect. So I just, I'm just reading some of these, uh, hang on. Okay, perfect. So, um, so that's what I kind of wanted to do today. I just wanted to use today as an opportunity to kind of share some guidance. You know, I'm hoping it inspires some of you, um, to, to either feel good with the red lights, know that there's purpose in them. And for so many people who are looking for their purpose in their life, wanting to move in a direction that will allow you to feel purpose in your life. I believe they said at the very end of this dialogue, they said, to do this, one must be willing to slow down and look out the window. They're talking about the landscape, what life shows you. Slow down and pay attention to what scenes are being given to you, what, what is being expressed for you in your life. It is through the window, the window of life, that purpose that is so wanted is to be found. So our purpose is found in the communication that shows up around us. So, But so many of us miss that communication because we just go through life 
on autopilot and we don't even pay attention to what's showing up for us. And if we can kind of make a little slight shift in that direction, we're going to find more things that we'll be interested in, more things to engage in, more things that get us ex excited or stimulated or, um, or, um, passionate about and that will lead somewhere and so one thing leads to another and that's what I always say about the guides is they get, they drop breadcrumbs for us and yours does it do it for you too so mine have been doing it for me for years um mediumship already started on my path oh my gosh in the 80s dropping breadcrumbs already I just wasn't making sense of it but um as I look back they've always been doing that and your guides are also giving you breadcrumbs in life and it's for us to pick them up or not pick them up I wrote it in my book here like this book um, that I have with the guide, you know, Letters from Spirit, I wrote about, on um, the very beginning of this book, I wrote about how guides work with us and the breadcrumbs that they drop for us and that you have breadcrumbs on your path just as I had on my path. And, you know, this book, just for anybody who wants to know, this is written during COVID. So every um, week I wrote, I read a different letter um, on a different topic, kind of like what we did tonight but there's, I think, 33 letters in this book that was written during COVID. And again, they impressed it upon me. It was just um, um, love letters from Spirit and Facebook Live. That's what they gave me. And I was fluffing my pillows on my couch. So that was communication my guides were giving me. And that's why I have this little heart on here, right? Because so I said letters from Spirit because I thought if I wrote love letters from Spirit, people might understand it differently. So I just wrote letters from Spirit but I put the heart there because they had said, you know, love letters from spirit. But what they meant, it was this loving way that they wanted to help us forward. And so I kept the heart in, in the actual um, picture opposed to in the words. Um, but yeah, I mean, they impressed it upon me. So you get a feeling, you get a thought, you get um, an impression, you have a desire, desire. Um, in, uh, inspiration. Guides are all about inspiration. They're all about filling you with inspiration. That's what they're always, always, always trying to do. And, you know, they are always really trying to help you um, on your highest path in your life. They're always trying to help us each um, forward uh, in the highest, best way for us in our life. And that is their role that they play for us. It's always to help not just to what is for us and it's for us to pick up the breadcrumbs or not and i wrote about it in this book so if you guys are interested in this book you can uh, go on amazon and get it um my website has the book uh link on my book page uh anyway um you know every letter is a little bit different uh and so tonight was just a little way i just kind of got back into channeling with them again uh, for me personally and then i wanted to do that for you guys so i hope you enjoyed it again take with uh take what you uh, like about it leave what you don't uh i'm never trying to push anything on you um and, and neither are they uh it's really just about sharing and if something resonates take that and if something doesn't resonate leave that and i think that we should all move in life that way with everything right take everything that feels good to you and leave everything that doesn't um go in the direction that inspires you and don't go in the direction that doesn't right um you know i wrote something on one of my face on my facebook page yesterday, you know, about, you know, if the road that you're walking on does not feel enthusiastic to you, if you're not feeling enthusiasm on the road that you're walking on, then you're on the wrong road. So re-navigate yourself. And how do we do that? How do we re-navigate ourselves? We re-navigate ourselves by moving towards something that feels better right? So if something isn't working and you're not feeling inspired or moved, then you're not going in the right direction. So you need to kind of go back a little bit and feel into something else that feels better. Anything that feels better will put you in the right heart space and mindset and energetic place to lead you to more of what is right for you, right? But you're never going to find it on the road of wrong. So we always have to pay attention to how we're feeling on our road. So if you don't feel inspired or enthusiastic, then you're probably not on the road to your purpose. So you need to kind of readjust and start again and just kind of try something else, right? And just try something else that makes you excited and just begin wherever that is. That's the starting out of the gates. Very simple. It, you start out of the gates there and it leads you to more. Believe me, it's kind of like, you know, once you get your engines going, 
right? And, and, and you get going, you start going, right? So it's, you just have to be um, willing to say, hey, I'm not feeling inspired. I'm not feeling enthusiastic. I don't think the direction I'm going, whether it be this job or whether it be whatever, maybe this isn't really for me or maybe in this department or maybe how I'm actually showing up, right? Sometimes we also have to kind of look at ourselves too and kind of say, hmm, is it like, like for job, for instance, I don't like my job. Is it really the job or is it how we energetically are showing up to our job? right? Because sometimes we have to take responsibility to how we show up in our own energy space, right? Um, in our relationships, in our careers, in our friendships, in the work that we do. You know, we always have to check in with ourselves too and know that we can always change how we feel. And that is about redirecting you, right? So if something doesn't feel energetic or enthusiastic, we have to ask ourselves, why is that? What is it about it? Is it how I'm showing up or is it actually what I'm doing? Right. So um, the guides are always really big on us asking questions. So, you know, they're constantly wanting us to ask, 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 ask. How do you like this? Do you like this? Why? What is it about this that you like? What is it about this that you don't like? They're always wanting you to ask because this is where we get to know ourselves. And as we begin to know ourselves, we begin to know what we like and what we don't like. We begin to uh, place ourselves on the road that is right for, for us by paying attention to what feels good to us and what doesn't. And that's always our responsibility. We always have to check in with ourselves and not beat ourselves up if we've spent some time on a road that doesn't feel right to us. That's information for us too, right? So there's nothing ever lost in anything that we're doing, whether it's um, been a good experience or not. There's, it's, it's always good for us. It's always helping us forward. Um, and it's, it, and sometimes it's just really by letting us know what doesn't work for us. Like they said, how if you like they said in the in the letter, if you don't show up, if you don't slow down and look out the window of life and pay attention to the scenery, and you don't slow down and pay attention to what is showing up for you, and you don't pay attention, and you don't pay attention to that, how are you to know what you like and what you don't like? How are you to know? what you want more of or what you don't want more of if you don't show up and have the experiences life is trying to show you so you can ask yourself the question so you can feel what feels good for you and doesn't make sense so that's kind of what that's what they were talking about there so uh anyway um i hope you guys enjoyed tonight i want to just pop on and share that little message for you guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, and I thank you guys so much for coming on and, um, until next week, I might be on next Thursday. I'm not sure. We'll, I'll, you'll, you'll know, just follow my, my page and I'll let you guys know. Okay. So, um, if you guys don't have any other questions, I think I'll chime out and get dinner. Um, let me just see. Um, Anne says it makes perfect sense. Thank you. Uh, Joanne says, thanks so much, Monica. I appreciate hearing this, especially today. Hi, Tracy. I'm looking to sell mom's house, but I can't find what I want. I was excited to look, but now feeling discouraged. Don't. I wonder if guides are trying to tell me something. Um, listen, you know how sometimes you just kind of have to say, sometimes you've got to kiss a lot of toes before, before you find your prince. Sometimes you've got to find the right house. Don't ever um, move towards something that doesn't feel right. Just be patient. And again, that might be you with the foot on the accelerator, and maybe this is a time for you to kind of slow it down a little bit and allow time to catch up a little bit and allow some other houses to come on the market for you and not be in such a hurry. So again, maybe that's you a little bit, Tracy, with your foot on the acceleration. Maybe, you know, um, slow it down a little bit, you know, go through life a little bit with the yellow light instead of the green light. Um, and, uh, and just allow maybe more, um, opportunities to come more houses to come on the market. It just may not be the right one for you yet. And just trust it. So don't be discouraged. Just say, you know, my perfect house hasn't shown up yet. That's okay. You know, you know, we can't expect these things to just materialize overnight. It's got to feel right. It's got to be in the right location. It's got to be the right price point. It's got to, you know, have things that you need. It's got to make sense. So, you know, all these things have to align for you. So be a little patient. So slow it down. Don't be in such a hurry, Tracy. Okay. Uh, Sarah says, I thank the guides each night for their support and guidance. Thank you, Sarah. I know they appreciate that. Um, you know, you know, they show up here when we're on these lives, you know, they're, they're in here, they're working with me. Um, Patricia, hey Pat, slowing down, being silent leads us to more awareness, a thousand percent. And again, like if you just think, I love how they use the yellow traffic light. When you're just traveling 
through the yellow light, we've all done it, you know, not supposed to, but we do. Um, you are cautious, you are aware, you are aware of what's to your right, what's to your left, what's ahead. You are aware because you're going through this yellow light cautiously, you're not speeding through it, you're kind of kind of going through it and you're paying attention to what's around you. So yes, as we slow down, more awareness shows up. And when more awareness shows up, that is where your communication is found. When you stop and look, when you stop and pause, when you stop and feel, this is when awareness comes your way. And this is when you get the answers to your question. This is when things begin to make sense to you. This is when things start opening up for you because you're now allowing life to actually give you what you're asking for because you're actually showing up and seeing these gifts unfold for you. But if you're not aware of it, you, you can't be there to receive it. So yes, Pat, absolutely. Uh, Sherry says, thank you. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome, Tracy. Okay, guys. So wonderful. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I always love coming on. You guys have an amazing evening. Have an amazing weekend as well, wherever you are um, in the world. Uh, I know you guys are all chiming in from many different places, and I always thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it so much, and um, I love being able to share my guides with you uh, and just sharing Thursday night with you. I love it. So thanks for that. So until next time, you guys, you be well and you take care, okay? And see you next time. Bye.